Louis Patron back with the final segment of the Key West Legal Hour for this Friday. I just talked to you about a dentist that was dirty, and people are very sick because of it. I just talked to you about a doctor who was doing abortions that uh, it's got to be a nut. He was killing babies. Fetuses were born alive. Now they're human. They're people. They're babies. He's cutting their spinal cord with a scissor. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about food poisoning now. Neither of those things should happen today in America. In the United States, there's no reason for dirty doctors, dirty dentists. There also is no reason, in my opinion, for food poisoning. We have so many federal, state programs to make sure that everything that reaches us at our table or we eat in a restaurant, in our homes, is clean, is free of germs, bacteria, whatever, so we don't get sick. And any time someone does get sick from food uh, poisoning, it bothers me because it means the system failed, and it shouldn't fail in this regard. We should feel free and easy to eat anything we buy in a restaurant, in a supermarket, or what have you. Food poisoning is up in this country. Food poisoning caused by bacteria. There are three ways of getting food poisoning. Bacteria, salmonella, and E. coli. Bacteria is up as the cause of food poisoning, and it comes from raw milk and poultry. That's where it's found. The bacteria in raw milk and poultry is causing food poisoning. A fellow by the name of Mike Strobe on April 18th in the USA Today wrote an interesting article on this. Uh, he said that the United States Center for Disease Control and Protection uh, in Atlanta had come out with a new report, a new study, that said in the last five years, bacteria poisoning in food is up 14%. And this was a study based only on 10 states. It shows a trend, however. It's up 14%. Food poisoning should always go down, not up, up 14%. The bacteria accounted for 35% of the food poisoning cases in the United States during that same period, and 10% of the deaths. People do die from food poisoning. Uh, I had E. coli twice. I thought I was going to die. You have no idea what E. coli is. You go in the hospital, you're dying. The doctor tells you this is day one. On day four, you really think you're going to die. But on day seven, you're going to walk out. Both times on day four, I thought I was a goner. I never suffered so much in my life. But they pump you up with all these antibiotics and everything. And by day seven, I walked out of the place like nothing had happened to me. Terrible experience, however. So wherever it is, we've got to watch out for it. In the meantime, sequestration and everything else, we're cutting back under our austerity programs on our federal inspectors of food that we eat. We gotta watch where we cut. We have to watch where we cut. I mean, what's the sense of saving the country economically if we lose some of our citizens physically? I'm gonna talk about something I didn't believe, but it's true. I'm gonna talk about tsunamis. You know what tsunamis are? That's when there, there's been some an earthquake or something and all of a sudden, from 20 miles offshore comes this big wave, 15, 20, 50 feet high, washes over land. Hundreds of people are killed, property demolished. Well, we have, a lot, we have tsunamis in the Pacific. I always thought if we were going to have one in this country, it's going to happen in California. Not the way, not the way. A study just came out this week that said those walls of water, the tsunami, are coming, are coming. And when they come, they're gonna hit from New Jersey to New England on the East Coast, you heard me. Sandy Hook could get hurt, hook, hit again from New Jersey to New England. I'm not being a fear monger or a rabble rouser. They say this is coming and here's why. We have had recently 15 earthquakes off the East Coast of the United States, specifically off Boston. We don't know about them because they're 170 miles out. They're 170 miles out into the ocean, and none of the 15 have been strong. I think the biggest one was a 4.0. They didn't create any problems in Massachusetts, anywhere in New England or New Jersey. The reason this is happening, they say, is there's a continental shelf out there. We all know what the continental shelf is. And the Earth's crust 
is starting to flex, which means that the shelf out there is flexing. Why is the earth moving now like this, the land up and down, and the continental shelf, which is land under the water, moving up and down? Because of uh, global warming. They say there used to be a heavy load of ice on the world, on the earth, and there were glacial, glacier eggs, we don't, lakes rather. We don't have as much of a load of ice anymore because we know the North Pole, the South Pole, there, it's melting. These places are melting. They're not melted. They may never melt, melt, but they're melting. They're breaking away the ice pieces. And because the load is not as heavy in the North Pole and the South Pole, it frees up the earth to flex like this up and down. And when this happens, you get earthquakes. And apparently the continental shelf, about whatever number of miles it is off the East Coast, is moving up and down more rapidly. And they believe this is going to happen. When? They don't know. Remember this. If there's a tsunami, that big wave of water, you've only got 10 or 15 minutes notice. No one gets saved. You've read these stories. A bad situation. Let's talk about aval avalanches. You know, the snow comes down the mountain and kills people. Well, we're having more avalanches across the world today than we have ever had before. I talked to you last week about two or three in Chamonix, Chamonix France, where people, uh, it's the Alps, it's Mont Blanc, they ski. Uh, we had three in Washington State that week also. This week there was one in Colorado, five people were killed. We are having more avalanches than we have ever had. The reason again is given, global warming. The snow is melting faster. And as it melts, it gets soft, and it moves down. It moves down the earth. Uh, the danger is going to get worse, but won't be that bad till 50 years from now. In the meantime, we'll have more little avalanches, and then in 50 years, big ones. We've got to start thinking about these problems. We're at the end of the show for today. I, I truly appreciate you joining me. I love doing this. I hope you enjoy watching and listening. Uh, I hope some benefit was derived. You do not have to agree with everything I say. Uh, but I try to open doors and open eyes to some things that may in the background uh, so we better understand, we better understand those problems that are confronting us. I'm going to be back next week and I hope you'll be back again joining me. Thank you again. See you next week.